Well, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Greg Hahn, and welcome to my shop, my workshop here uh, in Newcastle, Indiana. And uh, today I'm going to be demonstrating the different ways to use the Nike Press cabling system that's available from Boss USA uh, that they're using on a lot of the World War One stuff. I've used it quite a bit on several airplanes. Uh, most notably my Gotha from a couple of years ago uh, was completely done with Nike Press and now my new one, the uh, Caproni CA3 will be using the Nike Press. Um, and I've had some questions on exactly how to use it and what works and what doesn't so I thought I'd put together a quick little video on how I put the cables together, how I cut them, solder them up, swedge them and that kind of thing. So uh, we'll uh, get things rolling and uh, stay tuned and, and uh, We'll uh, show you how easy it is to use the system and how good it is. So uh, stay with us. Yeah, first and foremost, you uh, need to get the airplane itself set up, jigged up, and get the wings level or with dihedral, whatever you have to do to get the airplane correct. You want to have the airplane completely jigged up, wings and all, clear out all the way before you start cutting so that when you get these cables set and cut, they're actually going to fit and work and hold the airplane in position. I'll show you some close-ups here of some stuff I've already done. You can see the uh, different connections. That's with a clevis and then the swedging at the top. And I've done quite a bit on this airplane. It's probably going to take somewhere between two and three hundred feet of cable and uh, the system works real good it's good and solid you solder one end into the clevis end and then you swedge the other end if you start out with good tight cables then they don't take a whole lot of adjusting after flights because there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of stretch with them so anyway we'll get things uh, more moving toward the the mechanics and how to put them together but you can see how they fit but like I said the main thing first off is get the airplane set where you want it get the wings set level with all the dihedral or straight or whatever you're going to use and then cut the cables to fit from there so uh, we'll get started here now we'll go through some of the tools you're going to need going to need some uh, good silver electrical solder Preferably small, usually a 30, 40 thousandths diameter uh, with a rosin core can help. I don't like to use acid on cables because I don't want to have to clean them and worry about the acid wicking up the cables because it will do that. Uh, if you do want to use any type, any type of a rosin or whatever extra, you want to use like a ruby fluid or whatever, which doesn't have quite the acidic properties that, that some of the silver solder uh, rosins have. You're going to need a, a couple of good pairs of pliers, a uh, really good set of side cuts, a good pair that's nice and sharp so you don't have to so you don't fray the ends when you cut them. You're going to need the swedging tool which is part of the Nike Press system. It's properly diametered on the end for the different size swedges and they make the perfect crimp so you uh, get a good mechanical bond there and you don't get any slippage or any stress or stretch. Then you've got the uh, brass ends, which you use to solder the end of the cable into, which has a clevis and a nut. And the other end is, is the swedge. You can see the swedge here and the clevis. And they're pretty small, so you're going to have to use the ends of your fingers pretty regular. And then I use a, a, a small 30 thousandths drill bit to... Uh, scratch up the inside of the tube before I solder it which gives it gives it a little better mechanical bond a little better bite into the into the uh, brass threaded end and then uh, I use an 80 watt soldering iron you can use probably anything from 60 on up but the 80 watt uh, has a tendency to get the solder to flow quicker gets it good and solid and uh, doesn't take as much temper out of the brass fittings because uh, the hotter you get them the longer they stay hot, you end up annealing them, and then they get soft, and it bungles up the threads and things. See, what you want to do is get it soldered, get it quick, and get it cooled before you 
get too much anneal on the brass parts. So um, get your tools handy, get them ready, and uh, that way everything's right in front of you. Normally I like to uh, start from the inside out, uh, closest to the fuselage, and then work your way out to the end of the wing. That way everything stays straight as you go out. If you start out on the end, uh, a lot of times your, your wings can end up wavy. So actually the first part of the operation is to take your cable, which hopefully is you leave bound because if you unbind it, it turns into a into a mess because it doesn't have a set, it is a cable. So it's essentially what you would call wire rope and it's pretty limp so you can get it into knots. The easiest way to measure this, the way it sits, instead of actually measuring with a, with a tape or what have you, is normally what I'll do is I'll go to my connector end and if you go from eyelet to eyelet what that's going to do once you solder it up it's going to give you enough slack at one end to do the swedge and you'll be able to hook in you won't waste as much you'll end up wasting usually less than an inch or so uh, when you cut the thing off so you you normally just stretch it from connector to connector like so you bring it up put your side cuts like this and uh, snap her in two and you don't have a frayed end like I said you need a really good set of side cuts that way you don't fray the end and uh, you normally I like to do like four or five six of them at a time so that once I get the soldering iron hot I can do five or six of them together get them done and then put them on and swedge them at the time so I'll hurry up and cut six or seven of them then we'll get to the soldering okay hope you can see this okay but normally what I'll do is take the cables and dip them into some ruby fluid paste just to get a little bit of rosin on the end of the cables because what I'm going to do is actually tin the cables first you actually put some solder on the cables first uh, and what will happen is the solder will wick up the end of the cables so that you get a good solid you know start to the joint once you get the solder inside the cable uh, then it's when you when it goes down into the brass it's actually going to uh, already have a start and that's pretty simple to do you just tin the end of the cables and then I take an end which is your standard threaded end which comes in the system I take a 30 thousandths drill bit and I'll work my way down inside with the drill bit spin it around a little bit and just on the pointy edges of the drill bit and what you're doing is scoring the inside of the brass piece which will give the solder a better mechanical bond when it solidifies it'll have some scratches in there to bite to when the when the solder gets finished and uh, normally what I'll do is I'll I got my third and fourth hand here set alligator clips what have you and what you do with that you can see hopefully you heat up the end of the brass you put the solder in the end of the hole you heat up the brass and then the solder wicks in and fills up the hole the reason I have the brass piece sitting on its side like this is so the solder will actually go up in and not run back down the side and down into the threads pull the cable out Heat, the, heat it back up, slide the end of the cable in, okay, and while it's in there you just heat the whole system, put some more solder in there to make sure you've got the hole good and filled up, so that you solder all the way out, and then I normally hold it in the center and wait for the solder to solidify, it'll take a couple of seconds for that to happen. That way you've got the cable right dead in the center. The hole's completely full of solder. You've got a little a little bit of extra solder hanging off the edge. You can just swipe that right off with the soldering iron. Keep you a sponge, a wet sponge, so you can clean the end of your soldering tip. Keep it fairly clean of excess solder and whatever the, the rosin has a tendency to turn black and you don't want the black ugly on your on your cable and that's how you solder the end of the cable 
into the clevis end, which is a brass piece. And when you're done and it's and it's nice and solid, um, to this point, knock on wood, I've never had one fail with this process, um, and it seems to work fantastic. You wouldn't think that something like that would hold uh, the tinsel or the or the stress that's put on it, but it does. I've not, like I said, not had one fail. Um, so we'll go from there. Okay, keep a. I always keep a small, fine triangular file handy, and uh, what I do with this, if there's any extra solder around the edge, uh, which kind of gets to looking a little ugly here and there, you take a small file and you clean that solder off of the brass clevis, like this. Make it nice and round again and clean it up and it uh, actually looks nice and clean at that point. That way you don't have any rough solder edges or anything like that. Okay, once you get the end soldered on your cables, uh, the next thing you want to do is assemble them. Normally I start with the jam nut first. Okay, you put it right there on the threaded end to thread it down. If you notice there's about three quarters, five eighths to three quarters of an inch of threads on the brass end and normally what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put the clevis on and only go down to where the brass tip starts to show through the yoke in the clevis and what that does is it gives you about another, I don't know, three eighths of an inch of threads so you can tighten it up if you need to. You can also loosen it if you need to. Normally you're going to need to tighten it. So you're going to want to make sure and give you yourself a little more slack on the upside so you can tighten them if you don't get the cable really tight when you swedge it. So you want to give you more room to tighten than you do loosen because you shouldn't have to loosen much any at all. So what you only want to do is screw on about a quarter of an inch down to the jam nut and that's how you assemble the end so that it looks like this when you're done. Okay, we've uh, now we've built the cables. Now we're going to install them on the airplane. And one thing you got to think about is where you want the cables to stay, especially your initial uh, cables that go from the fuselage or center section or whatever you have to out to the wings. And normally I like the cables to stay with the fuselage because they're easier to keep bundled up and they don't get twisted. So one end of a cable is permanent, the other end you can take off. So always keep in mind how you want to disassemble the airplane and how you're going to haul it to which permanent end you want to be. And normally from one side to the other I will keep all the clevises on one side and all the permanent ends on the other. So that's something you have to think about yourself is how you're going to take the airplane apart and how you're going to haul it. So you take your built cable and whatever connector you're using at the airplane whether it's this is the Sullivan type that you're looking at here this piece here it comes silver it has a grommet in it which is brass which gives you a pinch point that won't be cutting the cable into a Boss USA also has theirs and they actually have a loop swedge a, a looped end which works really well and actually looks more scale uh, this is what I've always used and was still using and so with Boss USA they're always coming up with new stuff and uh, their stuff happens to look a lot more scale so if you're definitely wanting the scale look and stuff their their pieces are, are what you're going to want to be using and it's probably what I'll be using in the future but I've already had these and already had them installed so you just take the clevis you open it up and you put it on the keeper just like that and it locks they're nice and tight and that's how you do one end and then we'll go up and swedge the other okay at the other end which is the end we're going to be swedging uh, what you're going to want to do is take the little swedge piece which can be copper or plated tin I think these are tin and uh, normally what you're going to do is you're just you're going to want to put this on the end first because it's going to loop around and come back through the swedge. Okay, so if you can see that, you put one end on, let it slide down, whatever. Then you come up here and then you loop the cable through, bring it around, 
And what you want to do is just kind of finger tighten it, pull it to, to where it's a little bit tight. Trying to make it so you can see this. And then you, I usually go in and I'll pinch it so that we've got a, it bends the cable around the loop just a little bit here. Okay. And then I'll hold this, which you can see brings the two cables together down here. See it? Then I'll slide this dude up. And then hopefully you didn't fray your cable very much. And it'll be able to slide on to where now you've got it going around your keeper and through the swedge and out the other side. And it's not real tight, but it's relatively snug. You know, it's loose. And that's kind of where you want it. Okay, next move is to take your swedging tool. And of course, since I'm using the smallest cable and using the smallest swedge, you're going to use the end clear at the end because this has three different size swedges on and you're going to want to use the one on the end for the small ones uh, for the 364 cable which is a little bit bigger you're going to want to use the one in the middle but we'll use the one on the end and what I like to try and do is I'll hold it straight and you want that swedge to be straight in the tool okay and you want about oh a sixteenth maybe a thirty second showing out both sides of the tool because the tool is wider is I mean the swedge is wider than the tool so you hold it in place then you get you a nice pair of needle nose pliers you hold the end that you looped with the pliers get a hold of it I'm old so I'm shaking a little bit here you grab a hold of it and then you just kinda tug on that a little bit give yourself about a half inch three-eighths to a half inch of, of loop and then squeeze the swedging tool and that's gonna hold it okay then you come over here and then you really give yourself a good crimp on the swedging tool and let up and you've got a relatively tight cable okay it's not making a music sound you got a nice loop you got about three-eighths to a half inch of loop at the top and you didn't move your jig, you didn't move the wings at all, and you've got a, a nice start to a tight cable. Is all it's going to take is a couple of turns on the clevis, and the dude is, and it's going to be just as tight as you're ever going to want it. Now to finish that off, what you're going to want to do is get your good set of side cuts. Come up here, and you've got a, a, an end here. You're going to waste about an inch and a half. You pull that up, put your side cuts in, get it as close to the swedge as you can, and clip it off. And then you've got a nice clean finish. To your swedge and uh, let me see if I can zoom this in a little closer you can see there you go now you can see what that swedge actually looks like as it loops around you can see where it loops then you come around it goes through the swedge and then you cut it off right here at the end and that makes a really nice setup it's clean it looks scale it's preventable and most and most importantly it's secure tight and it's not going to give you any trouble when you're out flying in a windy day or what have you it's going to keep everything together so that shows you how you build the cable you assemble the cable put the cable on how you loop it over swedge it tighten the swedge and uh, I recommend the system it works great uh, you can call Boss USA they give you all the parts and, and give you all the know-how they even have an instruction book with it uh, don't forget to get the swedging tool you're going to need it you might think smashing that with a pair of needle nose pliers is going to do the job, but it's not. You want a good tight swedge, and uh, so it won't uh, give up on you when, when you least want it to, which is when you're in the air. So give this system a try. Uh, I think you'll like it. I love it, and it works really good. So uh, enjoy your hobby. Thank you.